What's up guys, my name is Skill87 and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing for the Xbox 360 Fear 3. Now I personally really like the Fear franchise but you know I'll admit it does have its flaws. Uh, one of the flaws being that all the Fear games are relatively short but they're very awesome short games and each of the Fear games online have always been like good like to this day you can still find a game on Fear 2. Fear 2 is already old and people still like to play the Fear games online. When Fear 1 came out on the Xbox 360, it was one of the bigger games played. And it, you can download the online portion of Fear 1 on the PC for free. It's fucking awesome. Online for Fear has always been fun. But uh, they went a different route with the online with this game. And the single player is real good too. Now, um, I beat the single player, I mean, excuse me, I beat the single player cooperatively with a friend of mine, um, Epically Casual, and we had a good time, just that, like, when we beat the game, I was just like, really? This game was short as fuck. I'm talking about, like, really, really short. I'm talking, like, possibly four or five hours short. And the fact that I had a partner made it even easier. But having a partner in this game was real fun because both characters do not play the same. Um, but that's, let me just get down to the review. Um, story-wise, the story continues the, uh, basically the story of Alma and her unleashing the fucking apocalypse on the human race. Uh, Fear 3 possibly ends the franchise with the ending I got, but, uh, who knows, maybe down the road they'll change up something, but from the ending I got, I was just like, really? It ends like that? But, um, yeah, it's basically the continuation. You play as... You play as uh, one of her sons. You play as a uh, point man, as they call him. Another son protagonist. Alongside point man is his crazy, psychotic fucking brother. Who's basically like a fucking soul or spirit that can possess the, you know, soldiers and shit in the battlefield. And control them for a short period of time. And you basically just progress through the stages, ultimately trying to get to your mother to either stop her or absorb her power. Um... The story is good. I actually like the, the Fear franchise story. That's why I keep playing the Fear games because the Fear games, like, oh, let me get something out of the way. This game, I guess they just said fuck it with the whole Fear concept being scary. This game does not scare at all. Matter of fact, I don't think they tried to make this scary at all. There is, like, not a single part of the game where you will actually be like, holy shit, like, what the fuck just happened? Like, Fear 1 had so many moments where I jumped. Fear 2 had very little moments where I jumped. Fear 3 possibly had maybe one or two. Not even. Like, I, I wasn't even, like, shook. This game really concentrated on the action aspect of, you know, the Fear franchise. And that's kind of disappointing because, you know, I liked Fear 1 because not only did Fear 1 had good, good game mechanics and it was a good first-person shooter, it was, like, it was creepy. So... I'm expecting Fear 2 to be the same, and then Fear 2 kind of flopped with the whole scary aspect. This one, they just said, fuck that whole scary shit. Let's just concentrate on the action. And the action's really good in this game. It's the best action if, in terms of, you know, the Fear franchise. The, this is the most action-packed of the three. But damn it, what the fuck, man? If there is, no, if there is, if there is another Fear game, please, dudes. Fucking go back to the scary shit. And obviously, judging by the way that they did the cover for Fear 3... If they do a fear four, they're gonna replace the A with a four. I'm just throwing it out there. But um story's story's good. Um graphically, this is the best looking fear game. Fear one, everything looked like blocks and plastic and shit. Then fear two, everything looked real good, and fear three improves on fear two's engine. So fear three graphically is the best looking of the three games. That's that's not to say it's like on par with games like Call of Duty and shit, but of the three fear games out, fear three is the best looking one. The graphics are not bad at all, actually. Um, nothing actually looks bad. Nothing looks dated. There is no screen tearing. There's, like, no frame rate dipping here and there. So I'm going to give the graphics the A-OK. -okay. You know, good, the good score. Sound effects. Sound effects are, I guess, OK. Like, th there's no actual real ambiance in this game. The, the sounds of the guns are typical everyday sound effects. Nothing special. The voice acting, well, very little there is, is OK. And that's pretty much it with the sound effects. Like, they're not good, nor are they bad. So they're just, like, right there. So, you know, sound effects are going to get the meh. 
And then the controls, the controls are fucking wonderful. I think that's another reason I like uh, the Fear franchise. The controls are very responsive. They work. The controls feel different, unique. Um, the way the way it, your character moves and the way you can do the whole jump in the air and kick, the sidekick, the cover system in this game is phenomenal. Um, t t throwing grenades is quick. You know, guns feel great. The controls are fucking just on point. Possibly one of the best. You know, I think the controls help Fear as a franchise stand out. The controls are very, you know, they feel good. They don't feel like other, you know, they don't feel like Call of Duty. They don't feel like Battlefield. The Fear controls feel like, feel like Fear. So, uh, yeah, I love the controls for this game. Um, that's pretty much it with that. Uh, let's talk about the online. The online is really, really, like, the go-to of this game. Uh, I'm going to say right now, do not spend 60 bucks on this game. You will beat it in one fucking sitting like I did, like an idiot. Actually, no, no, two, two sittings. But my first sitting was like an hour or two. And I realized in that hour or two I played, I literally, like, made it really far. Because I just, like, excuse me, I annihilated everything in sight. But the online in this game is very different compared to the previous games. In Fear 1 and Fear 2, it was pretty much always about player versus player. And in Fear 3, they changed it all up. Gone is these large lobbies they had going on. The, the most players in an online game now is four. You can set up, when you, when you set up a lobby, you, it can set up to be two players, three players, or four players. And there's uh, four different game types. I'll tell you them right now. Hold on. I should have wrote this down, but I'm fucking retarded. Give me one second. Multiplayer host match. Uh, da, 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 da. This is Suicide. The Suicide game mode is basically... Um, it's wave after wave of enemies, so just survive wave after wave of fucking enemies. And what makes this typical survive wave of enemies different than other games is at the end of the rounds, you have to like send like a guinea pig out into the open field to pick up weaponry, like a, a case of weapons, and bring it back to your fucking spawn. And the thing is, what you will most likely, the round will start by the time he even gets like halfway there. So everyone has to, has to like defend them and shoot with little ammo they have left. So that's pretty fucking cool. And let me see, the, the next game type is called Soul King. Soul King is okay. What happens is um, it's it's four players up to four players, and you're all like you're you're all these demons. You're, you're you're four fucking demons, right? And you have a bunch of AI enemies running around. So what happens is you all have the ability to possess a soldier, and then you become that soldier until you get killed. And when you kill other soldiers or demons, they drop skulls basically, or you know souls. And you basically collect the souls and. If you die, you drop all souls you have, and basically the player with the most souls at the end of the round wins. Now, um, what makes this game different than other games that have the same concept of collecting shit is, you know, you're four ghosts and everything else is AI, so the AIs can fight back, and you are possessing the AI, and if you die, you turn to a ghost again, and from there you can die. It's pretty cool, like, it's, it's different, but it ain't nothing we ever played before, it just has, like, that fear thing going on. Um, Soul Survivor... Is a, uh, it is the same concept of say, surviving wave after wave. What happens is as soon as the game starts, you're expected to survive a certain period of time, and the enemies just keep coming. And you have a big-ass map, right? And it's the four of you guys doing your fucking best to survive. And the enemies just keep coming, and they keep coming, and they keep coming. And unlike the, uh, the game mode where it's like wave after wave, you know, that you defend a specific area, in this game mode, you have a big fucking map. So you got to you know, team up. And do the whole watch my back, I'll watch your back thing. And while enemies just surround you and shit. You have a big map to traverse. And then the final game type is fucking run. Which is actually as awesome as it sounds. This game type is literally called fucking run. And it is really, really fucking cool. Um, the, four, the four you start off in like a safe area. As soon as the fucking the gates open and shit. You have to progress. And run for your fucking life. And you're going to be attacked. The enemies are coming at you. We have to run forward. And there is no stopping a camp. It's complete rushing. Kill and mow down these fucking enemies. Because you have a fucking... If you turn around, you will see a, the apocalypse fucking hurricane, fog, whatever it is. And that's like a bunch of faces all over it coming. And if one of you gets touched by this plague, this fucking wall, the game, it's game over. So it took a big rush. Hence the whole name of the game type, fucking run. Just keep fucking moving, dude. It's such a cool game mode. I've been playing this for hours. I love this game mode. You got everyone on the mic. Go, 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 go. Kill everything outside. Kill everything inside. Keep moving, keep moving. Oh my God, he's down, he's down. Revive, revive him. The fucking cloud is right there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's like, you get really amped up. But uh, yeah, 
Um, that's pretty much it. Like those are the four game modes, and you know, as you can clearly tell, there is no free. You know, there is free for all, but it's free for all with an objective, and that's the Soul King. And everything else is basically team based. So, and the most players in a lobby will be four, and everything else will be AI. So they went a different direction with the multiplayer for this game. I see it as a good direction. They did. They didn't want to be like, okay, well, you know, it's just another game with team deathmatch and free for all and whatever. No, they said let's try something different. Let's give them one objective co competitive mode. Everything else is like, you know, co-op and shit. It works. Finding games is easy because you only need is four people. I, I, you find games left and right. I never had an issue finding games. Um, I forgot to mention this game has a very unique ranking up system. If you when you play single player and multiplayer, you rank up in both modes at the same time. So whatever rank you are in single player, you are that same rank in multiplayer and vice versa. And in you know in previous fear games, you have to do like certain things to upgrade your slow mo and all that other shit. This game is different. This is pretty fucking cool. You're playing single player, and as you progress through the game, you're getting points and shit, like killing enemies, you know, by sliding, picking up shit, picking up intel, killing enemies a specific way, stabbing them in the back, and you get points. And when you get points for these things, like playing with style and shit, you rank up in the middle. Like, it's cool. You're playing single player, it says you have just ranked up, you're a level one, and your reward is, uh, you know, you have increased sprint and increased slow-mo. You cannot carry more ammo. You cannot carry more grenade types. This is pretty fucking cool. So by the time I beat the single player campaign, I was level 11. I go online, I'm level 11. And everything I everything I earned in terms of, you know, upgrades, it worked for my, single, you know, my online multiplayer. So that's pretty fucking cool. There's lots of different things to, you know, unlock for points and shit. And it's pretty cool that I can rank up a single player and then take my progression online. I'll be the same fucking rank. Uh, the majority of the achievements of this game are online based, as with most of the fear games, as with the fear games have always been. Yo, I only had like 17, 18 achievements unlocked after I beat fucking Fear 3 with a partner. And then I go and check the achievement list. I Like over 30 achievements are online based. And they're not easy to get out of there. I'm like, whoa, like you really gotta like really dedicate time to Fear 3 online to get these achievements. None of these achievements are actually easy. But um, you know, you know, just final score for this game. I I, I wish I could give the game a higher score, but the, the campaign is really short. But it is an improvement in terms of graphics and control and shit. But it's just a short campaign. It's not really worth 60 bucks. And then the majority of the achievements are online. So if you know if you're one of these dudes that you're tro you know you're achievement hunter, trophy hunter, but you don't have access to online, kind of screwed out of that. And then the online, though, in my opinion, is the right direction. Try something different. You get the whole you know cost concentrating on co-op. It would have been nice to have maybe one or two more forms of competitive you know multiplayer. But um, the single player and the co-op campaign is fun, just short. And in the end, I really cannot recommend buying this game for sixty bucks. It won't be justified. Rent it or wait for a good price drop. I waited for Fear 2 to have a price drop of 30 bucks and I bought it. So when Fear 3 gets a nice price drop of 30 bucks, or if you want to rent it or game fly it, then do it like that. Uh, I'm going to give this game. Hmm. I'm going to give this game. Basically. Damn. This is a, this is a tough score. Well, yeah, I'll be fair. I mean, it is what it is. Even though I do like Fear. I do still gotta be fair. I'm gonna give this game the 7.5 out of 10. 7.5. The campaign was a bit too short. I'm talking about like holy shit short. But um, I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that like it's like short. Like like it, not even Call of Duty short. Shorter than Call of Duty. Like and that's unheard of. Like Call of Duty campaigns are ridiculously short. This this campaign short as shit. Oh, and there's like there's not even that much big of a variety of weapons either. And then there's a couple of sequences where you get to play as a mech, and playing as a mech is more tedious than anything. Like it's really slow paced and boring. And the lack of scares is retarded. Like I really cannot believe it's like this game wasn't scary at all. But yeah, seven point five out of ten. Tell me what you guys think of this video, and um, you know, comments, thumbs up, do whatever. And seven point five out of ten. Fear three, holy shit! Come on, Fear four. If it, if you if Fear four does get made, be scary, please. Like, kind of continue what the franchise is known for. But yeah, peace.